What's up, Copperheads fans, and welcome to the next episode of Inside Pitch. I'm your host, Sarah Vallone, and I'm going to be talking to two of the Copperheads pitchers about their lives in baseball. First, I'm with pitcher Justin Brantley. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. So talk a little bit about having an uncle and a cousin that went through the major leagues. Your cousin, uh, Michael Brantley, is still in there right now. Uh, it's good. Uh, I mean, my uncle went through. Uh, I was just I was there from, I think, 87 to 90, so I mean, I wasn't even born yet. Uh, but obviously, when I first came, uh, like my cousin was born out of uh, Seattle, Washington, uh, when he was up in the Major League with the Mariners. Uh, now my cousin's there now. Um, I mean, I've gone down for the last two summers, previous to this summer, to work with my uncle and some of his friends down in the Mets organization that he coached with for a little while. Uh, so it's his out his resources are above, above the world. It's I can it couldn't be more help. couldn't be more thankful for it. Right. So I mean, your uncle was a coach after he finished playing. How does him being a coach and knowing how to coach players help you out? Uh, definitely. I mean, he's a hitting coach, but I it took for my like my pitching coach up at school, it took him probably a couple months to realize what I was doing wrong mm -hmm. in the fall, and it took him literally two innings to see me pitch. You know, when he came and saw me pitch, we played, I think, UCF down there in Florida. And it took him two innings to figure out what, exactly what I was doing wrong uh, and tell me. So, I mean, obviously, to be a good hitting coach in Major League, you got to know and understand pitching as well. So, I mean, he's helped me out tremendously. Right. And you said he has all the resources in the world. How do you use those resources to your advantage? Uh, like I said, I went down and worked with uh, one of the Mets uh, rehab guys that was actually working with Johan Santana, the same, he was throwing the mound next to me. So, I mean, just to be around that kind of atmosphere and see those kind of players that close and personal, it's definitely an advantage to uh, take everything in. Right. Now, um, your cousin isn't that much older than you, so you got to grow up with him and see his path to the major leagues. Seeing him go from team to team, he still had that struggle, as every baseball player does, to get into the major leagues. What did you take from that? Uh, I, I went up there a couple weeks ago and I talked to him about that and asked him uh, some of the hardships he's had growing, growing up. Um, I mean, out of high school, obviously with his dad being in the major leagues, he's always been expected to do a little more than mm -hmm. most people do on a normal team. Uh, so, I mean, he's, he's like that. He likes that type of uh, adversity, I guess, and he, he strives on it. So he. Um, he said it's he just try to work hard every day and go do his job. Okay. Um, so he's having an exceptional year this year, and you had an exceptional year uh, this past year collegiately, but you're doing even better this summer. Uh, does he uh, call you and say, like, how are you doing? Like, uh, we text. I'm at, for example, I texted him yesterday, actually. Um, we text probably once a week, twice a week since I've been, since I've been here in Ohio. Uh, just checking in, seeing how I'm doing. If there's something well on TV that I see, uh, I'll text him and congratulate him. Same thing for him, for me, because it's actually kind of weird because one of their hitting coaches, like lower down, was up in Cleveland when we went up there to visit, and uh, he, his son, plays in this league, I think, for the Mariners. So he gets a little updates and stuff from him. I want you see my name in the stats or something like that. So he texts me all random information, stuff like that. Uh, so it's, it's definitely beneficial. Right. So um, you're really standing out this summer. What's clicking for you? Uh, I, I just haven't had a, both my off-speed pitches or fastball or curveball and a slider working pretty much all collegiately um, besides my first start. And it's finally starting to come come together a little bit more. Um, been able to control my fastball a little bit and be able to get a little bit of movement on the fastball when I need to and counts from trying to get a ground ball and whatnot. Um, so it's just it's all clicking right now. Great. Well, good luck Thank in you. the years to come. And now I'm here with pitcher Eric Frederick. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. So you had a pretty successful year coming in here from the collegiate level. You had a 3.15 ERA, um, a 4-1 record. Talk about the transition coming into the summer league. Um, it was, I don't know, I was just going to come in here and pitch the same like I did all year long and just compete in the zone and throw a lot of strikes and see how it goes. So at the end of the year, you decided to transfer from Easter Central University to Oklahoma Baptist. Um, why the change? I wasn't getting uh, as many looks as I'd like over there at ECU. It was kind of out in the middle of nowhere, and not many scouts really knew of the school. So I had to leave, and this is a place. They had a really good track record, and I talked to the coach, and he offered me a good amount of scholarships. So I decided to go there, and they said they get a lot of scouts, so I'm going. Okay. Now, how hard would the transition be for you? I mean, you've transitioned from colleges before. Yeah. Uh, not really that big of a deal. Like, I mean, I don't know. I've had to move from college to college just because of certain things. Like, my first college, I was an outfielder, 
and I had to learn how to play like pitch and I wasn't I wasn't making that transition very well and uh, so I didn't play that much that first year and I lost my scholarship at my first college because of that and then my second one I went to another college and then I pitched there and I was better there and but you can only play two years in a junior college so then you have to go to another school you have to move on so I went to this East Central place and then now I'm going to Oklahoma for reasons that I just explained so yeah. it's not really that that it doesn't affect me very much you know it's a new team but it's all right baseball's baseball right now you talked about getting looked at more you had a chance during the all-star weekend to go to the prospect camp um what kind of experience was that for you it was cool it was very nice it was fun to do um it was nice to see all the scouts and everything and all the talent and uh it was just exciting to go out there and throw a pen in front of some scouts so mm -hmm. it was cool how many cool. opportunities did you have to throw um in front of the scouts yeah uh, just once. They, what they had you do is they had the prospects all throw and they had each prospect throw probably like 16 pitches in front of a scout. So each prospect got 16 pitches basically. So it was just one opportunity, but it was good. It was good. Okay. Now that you're transferring to a bigger school, you've had the prospect camp, you've been looked at. What is the next step for you? Hopefully to just get picked up, get signed maybe, get a little contract, and, you know, maybe a bus ticket just to go somewhere. But I mean, I'll take it, so that's the lifetime dream, so I'm going to try for it. So. All right, well, good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you for talking to me. Thank you. Until next time, I'm Sarah Vallone.